Uh, welcome to the former Community Preservation Committee meeting at uh, City Council Hearing Room, One Government Center, Fall River, Mass. The meeting is accessible visuals through uh, cable TV, channel 18, uh, Fall River uh, Government Television, uh, Facebook, live streaming. Um, today is Monday, February 13th, 2023, 6.03. Um, pursuant to the open meeting laws, any person may make an audio or video recording of these public meetings or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and deemed knowledge and permissible. Um, we'll start with roll call. We'll start with uh, Zoom. Caroline, you want to lead us off? Uh, Caroline Aubin, attend. Caroline Aubin, attending. Joanne, uh, just, just say your name. Okay, <laughs> sorry, Joanne Bentley. Kristen Cantera Oliveira. Alexander Silva, City Council appointee. Uh, John Brandt, Conservation. Richard Calderon. R Rick Mancini, Historic Commission. Here. And we also have tonight Sandy Dennis as our Administrative Assistant. From the FRG TV side, we have Craig. We are missing uh, Vic Ferreira tonight, and we're missing a member from planning department. Um, any citizen input? We have no citizen input. Uh, can I have a motion for approval of the minutes from January 30th? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of January 30th. I'll second. Motion and a second. Uh, we'll start with Caroline. Roll call vote? Yes. Joanne? I think maybe oh, you since here, I, was, so I wasn't abstain, here, yeah. I wasn't a member uh, at that time, so I'm yes. abstaining. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Kristen Cantara Oliveri, yes. John Alexander. Brandt, yes. Ale Alexander Silva, yes. Oh, thank you. Richard Calderon, yes. Richard, Rick Mancini, yes. Okay. Uh, tonight is our funding hearing. Uh, most of you guys out there have been here before. So what we'll do is we'll call you. This is mainly for like some of our new members here. Uh, we'll call the uh, applicant up and they'll tell us about their project. So tonight we're going to be asking questions um, that are on the application. The application should have everything that we request, uh, but this is a good time to ask questions uh, about the bids, what's going to be, if, if when we get the grading part, one, two, and three, or if you don't want to fund it at all, how it would fall in your spectrum of voting, uh, then this is a good time to put something in like when we get ready for our grant application, what, uh, uh, say it's a roof, start writing down what we want to put in the uh, application that we're going to pay for covered under the grant. So just some things you can look at, uh, take notes. Um, first on the list is the North Burial Ground. Uh, Gate Masonry uh, Pier Restoration. They're looking for 93. Uh, Chris, you want to come up? Good evening. Good evening. Just state your name. And I'm Chris Brino. I'm assistant planner, uh, presenting on behalf of the North Burial Ground Gate and Masonry Repair uh, Project Proposal. In the application, our CPA funding request is actually 110,000. Um, this is a continuation of the project that was funded through this committee originally uh, to fix the gatehouse itself. This would be to fix the vehicular and pedestrian gate pillars and ironwork. Um, I'm not sure, this is my first time presenting in front of this board, so I'm not sure if you want me to go through all of this information or if you have specific questions. Um. Just give a br brief overlay of uh, the, the the gatehouse now is finished. That's right. So in, yeah, just in the, the public, just yeah. go over sure. kind of the general. In the application packet at the very end, you'll see pictures of what the gatehouse looked like before uh, CPC funded the restoration and what it looked like afterward. Um, so we hired uh, Civitec um, to oversee the project, and they brought on um, a masonry and restoration company um, on the city's behalf to do the work so the building was completely uh, cleaned and repointed uh, 
uh, to the specifications of historic restoration. They redid the window sashes, uh, put in new uh, glass for the windows, um, took out one of those columns there, um, those small brownstone columns, um, so that way they could cast a new one to replace one that was missing, replaced the gutters um, and downspouts, as well as made some slate repairs to the roof. Uh, so all in all, the building, I think, came out uh, very well. Uh, part of that original project was to start working on the vehicular pillars uh, and pedestrian gate pillars, uh, but the funding was not sufficient to cover those costs um, that were originally anticipated. When they started looking at them, the ironwork was in a significantly worse condition than originally thought. Um, so we're before you to ask for additional funding to finish off this project so that way we'll have the gatehouse and the, the gates fixed on uh, North Main Street. Okay. Yeah, the gatehouse turned out really nice. They did a nice job. I mean, it looks like it was built back then, you know. Yes. Uh, are they using that for anything right now? We're not using it for anything. The inside hasn't been updated. Um, it has certainly improve the aesthetic of the cemetery yeah and we've seen a decrease in vandalism since we've done that work yeah um, so it's been very helpful this project will, will only help further that because we'll have, actually have gates that we can shut yeah. and control mm -hmm. access so um, we're hopeful that we can secure funding for it okay um, I don't have any questions uh, Caroline do you have any questions you'd like to ask I do not at this time. Okay. Uh, we'll just work our way down the board if we have any uh, questions. Um. No, I do not. Um, so it, it, it is falling under the category of historic preservation. So did you get a letter of support from the Historical Commission? Because that's one of the requirements. Anything under historic preservation is supposed to have a, a letter of support from them. I don't see it in the packet. I just don't know if we have everything. I think there was one for the original application. Um, we have one from the Board of Park Commissioners and a letter from uh, the architect. But I don't think we have one for the updated application from the Historic Commission. We can always add that. I mean, yeah, it was on the last one, so. Technically, the wording could still count. If it was, was supposed that, to have the gate, so I was before. So my, was it the, the the original project? I thought didn't have the gate. I thought it was just for the house. It was for the so house. So this is a separate. Exactly. This is a separate project. So it exactly. wouldn't be the same wording. It's a it's a different it a, project altogether. I mean, I understand it's a continuation of the cemetery, but it's it's a different project. Okay. Like the first one was finished. J so. Just for your identity, there's a proposed meeting on February the 23rd of the Historic Commission, and you would have time to call and get on the agenda. Great. So I would recommend that you call Jason or something, you know. We'll do that tomorrow morning. Yeah. That way we get have it on, on the file. And sure. In case anybody looks. Um, Alex? Um, uh, yeah, I was just wondering, so I'm actually really glad to hear that the past project for the gatehouse has led to a decrease in vandalism. I think it's really good for everyone to hear that uh, these kinds of rehab projects do have a benefit to the community, just kind of visually. Um, I was wondering uh, if there were any plans or anything for the rest of the perimeter fence. I know in some locations it might not quite be secure. Um, and a lot of the reasoning cited with this project has been to secure the cemetery and the entrance. So I was just wondering if there are any plans for uh, the rest of the fence or anything like that. Uh, so most of the fence is intact. There is a section of it that was damaged by a, a fallen tree mm -hmm. recently on the Brightman Street side of the cemetery. And the staff is looking at um, fixing that internally, putting back. It's a chain link fence right mm -hmm. now. Uh, we don't have any formal plans to do anything that would be probably more historically appropriate. Um, there have been, um, uh, so that would be the, the main uh, point that would need to be fixed, but we are looking at that. We need to clean out the uh, the holes that were already there for the chain link fence and okay. put it back up. Because yeah, yeah, that cemetery is on the national cemeteries list, so funding for it would be 
as you walk through there, and it's, uh, you, you just see the, the gravestones that are knocked over, but they're so old, and you're just the history just comes back, and it seems like we should take a little better care of our past history. And right. So, uh, myself and another member of our staff went to uh, a training held at Forest Hills uh, to do monument restoration. Um, so. We've, we've done that training. We've read the preservation guidelines that DCR put out for, for historic, uh, historic municipally run cemeteries. Um, so we have been working internally to do some of the minor repairs that we can handle in-house and with the funding we have available. Um, typically headstones are, are, are uh, personal property of you know, the families that purchase the grave, so it doesn't qualify as a perpetual care expense. Mm -hmm. So we do have to look for other funding mechanisms to do that type of work. Um, but we are addressing those issues. Um, we are, I'm in the process of putting in an application to DCR for some tree planting, um, and we would target North Burial Ground to remove some of the dead and decaying trees and um, have them replaced to further enhance the, the look of that cemetery at this point. So this would finish off the the, the gatehouse, the, the the front gate. So the entrance to the uh, burial grounds would be finished. Correct. Okay. All right, Richard. Yeah, I just have just a quick question. So you're requesting one hundred and ten thousand from the yeah. CPC, and then other funds fifty-seven thousand. What's the fifty-seven thousand? So for? it's my understanding that there has already been an award from this committee to do All some prior. of this work. We, if, is it leftover funds from past projects? From past I mean, yeah, because we really can't uh, transfer it unless it's part of the gatehouse connected. I mean, if it's separate from not connected, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't it's a different project. Right. Again, my understanding, of, and I picked this up from another department and. Um, tried to gather as much information as I could. My understanding is that the one of the projects that was in front of this board was for the gatehouse and some of the gate work, not just the gatehouse. Mm -hmm. When they went to do that gate work, there were significantly more problems with the gate than, than was originally um, anticipated. So one of the structures was struck by a vehicle and we knew that had to be completely rebuilt. Mm -hmm. The other one that's actually closer to the gatehouse itself Mm -hmm. wasn't but the uh, the condition of that pillar requires us to take it down to the ground um, and and reassemble it um, and then redo uh, the ironwork of the hinges and the actual gates itself okay so the 57,000 is from uh, another approved CPC project correct okay so 57,000 If, if you or, or maybe reaching out to Sandy could find out exactly where that earmarked funds are from. If it's from a past grant uh, from us, we may need to do a vote actually to right. make it eligible for this increased scope. Well, um, let's see. Uh, or we may have it. Right because North Barrow Grounds, wasn't that one of the very first? My first year was projects. one of them. And I thought the gate was included. That's two and a half years ago now? Well, look, no, 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 I mean North Barrow Ground was one of the original, I thought that Oak was Grove, years and years ago. Was, Oak Grove was the first one, I think. Oak Grove was, the but gates, I thought yeah. I thought North Barrow Ground was actually on there before I was even on here. Do you have that? You should have that documentation, Chris, and if it's over two years, it, it uh, We long. have, uh, it wasn't always we can look, years. I mean, I it, it has uh, North Barrow Ground exterior repairs to gatehouse. Um, but there could be more to that. We can look that up. Yeah. Just before deliberations. Yeah. That answer. So if if it's not in there, you would want to add another fifty-seven to your total. Yeah. If it's not there. Yes. Okay. Because we just can't like transfer. Yeah. I'll we'd have I'll, to. I'll check with Sandy, but. Like I said, the information I was given was that the original project yeah. was the gate and part of the, the gatehouse and part of the gate. Yeah. It might. I'm just looking here. This is what we get from... Uh, I think the original award was for the gatehouse and then the... If you're looking at the cemetery yeah. from Main Street, the left-hand pillar was That's hit by a vehicle. And it was always the intention to repair that 
that pillar and then reattach the gates. Yeah. Um, so we brought the gates over to the cemetery. They tried to, you know, rough it in mm -hmm. on the existing pillar to the right nearest yeah. the gatehouse. Um, and at that point, it was uh, made, we were made aware that the the hinge work in the pillar itself was not going to be sufficient to put the gates back on. Yeah. They wanted to repair them, and then if they were doing that, taking those hinges out take the pillar all the way down, mark the stones, you know, which, where they were in, yeah. in the sequence, what side was facing out, and then rebuild it completely so that yeah. way it's, it's mm -hmm. done the right way the first time. I think it was included, but I mean, that was an FY16 project, so I'm not quite sure off the top so, of my head. Can I ask, it, I just have a question. On, on um, this PEG, the project description, it has, I'm, I just want to see if it's talking about the same thing as saying, Funding for the restoration of the existing iron vehicular gates was received as part of the CPA FY22 award. Is that what that 50 or is this a different award they're talking well, about? Well, this they didn't start the project. Uh, I kept getting put behind, put behind, and then uh, Chris uh, got the project rolling. So it took it's easy to five make. years to get this project going. So it's easy to figure out, and if, yeah. if it's old enough the funds might have already lapsed back into the account so it would be yeah. back into the available pool of money so if you change the grant amount it would just essentially be used for the same thing yeah so we'll just double check that to make sure yeah it's just it's a technicality of where yeah. like putting it on the thing so yeah so we'll, I think it is but like I say it's a six-year project seven years now so yeah we'll make sure Alrighty, uh, Rick, did you, were you all set, Richard? Yeah, no, I mean, I think to sum it up, and my colleagues will correct me wrong, if you can just get us that, inf if you can provide the board that information, I think Absolutely. it'll be helpful before deliberation, so that way, to, uh, to Mr. Silva's point, you know, I think we have to take a vote on it to add the additional 57000 and sure. you'll still just get let the it point. lapse. You'll let it lapse, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Yeah, whatever direction, but at least there'll be the backup information. Absolutely. So, thank yeah. you so much. Thank all you. Right. No, no. All okay. the uh, questions have been answered. Now okay. it's in the balls in your court. Get that data. And you got it. All right. <laughs> Let's head it out. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, so just forward that from the store commission to Sandy and she'll pass it on to us. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Next, uh, uh, Fulver uh, School Ad Building. Uh, railing on patio west side of building main entrance restoration uh, they're looking for 60,000 located on Rock Street is anyone here from the uh, school department okay I think they have a school school committee meeting tonight um, do, we I guess, wanna, do we want to invite them to the next meeting after the or before the private projects yeah we can do that uh, I mean I don't know if we have more questions but yeah I'm not sure if the board has any questions on it so uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, can I have a motion to table this to the uh, what's the next one February 25th I'll make a motion to table it to the next uh, CPC meeting so that they have a chance to be here okay uh, why don't we take a uh, just two at one time. Those are next. The forever uh, window replacements for 260000 That's located on Rock Street, too. So can I have a motion to take these two uh, projects and uh, put them on the agenda for February? Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, table both of these projects, which are the... Um for the fall of public schools, the window replacement project, the side, side patio railing and main front entrance project to our next scheduled meeting after this one in February to give them a chance to attend. I'll second that. Uh, roll call vote. We'll start with Caroline. Yes. Joanne? Yes. Uh, Kristen, yes. Alex Silva, yes. John Brandt, yes. Richard Calderon, yes. Rick Mancini, yes. Okay. Now that brings us to uh, the North Wetupa Pond, seawalls. 
Uh, they're looking for 82,500. Uh, Mr. Furlan. Thank you very much. for the public. Paul Furlan, the Administrator of Community Utilities, City of Fall River. Michael Bossier, our Reservation Forester and Project Manager of the City of Fall River. <coughs> Excellent. Thank you very much uh, for hearing us tonight. Uh, the first project that we have in front of you is for the North Watupa Pond seawalls. Um, as some of you may know, there are historic seawalls that uh, border the North Watupa Pond. Uh, they do not only a uh, very nice job framing some of the areas of the North Watupa Pond, uh, they also act to help protect the North Watupa Pond drinking water supply uh, from erosion and uh, wave um, damage that may uh, affect the shoreline. Uh, some of these uh, walls over the years have, uh, have uh, seen better days. What we'd really like to do is do a full evaluation of all the walls around the pond. Uh, identify all the areas where the walls are located and then be able to uh, come up with a plan to hopefully restore the walls uh, as time comes on and funding be becomes available. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the proposal that's uh, that's provided in front of you. I'll turn it over to Mike for a little bit more history. And yeah, so um, as, um, as you look at the walls you realize they're made out of native granite and they sort of architecturally connect to some of the other architecture related to the 1873 pump house and um, and, and, some, and the standpipe, uh, you know, quarried native granite. Um, the Olmstead, uh, Frederick Law Olmstead's uh, firm uh, did have a look at them in the 1890s um, and some of the photographs that were provided actually came from their the historic um, place uh, in um, uh, near Boston, and um, so they are. You know, I, I won't duplicate what Paul said. Um, you know, they they have artistic, uh, you know, genuine artistic value. But more importantly, they're protecting the water supply. They protect uh, the the shoreline from erosion. And um, after uh, over a hundred years, uh, they're being undermined by you know, the wave action and wind action. And um, we want to really take a really solid look at them to be able to understand what's going to be required to fortify them. In, in speaking to um, some uh, you know, engineers uh, and, and others in this field, this is a really good time to find uh, funding to do some of this work. But you got to start with an understanding of what, what needs to be done, and so that's, that's the importance of this study. Um, I, I have a letter, it came in kind of late, but I have a letter of support from the for the Historical Commission. I, if you don't mind, I could sure. bring, it, bring it forward. I'll just drop one off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Package, and then I'll leave the rest with Sandy. So some of the areas where you can see those, where you can see those, you, these walls, uh, if you're not familiar with them, are the causeway at the very north uh, area of the pond that crosses the pond and brings you into the reservation. Uh, Interlagen, so it was originally a, a New Boston Road that uh, led out to Interlagen uh, Island uh, Peninsula, uh, down by the 1873 Waterworks Complex, so all around the front side of that building next to uh, our old original water treatment plant. Uh, also on the Narrows Causeway, so on the side of 195. They can also be seen there. Just to let the committee know that uh, working with the water department at the state level, they consider our, our water department down here one of the best partners working with because their applications are always kind of on point. Um, so they always do present a good project. Uh, this has been before us before. Uh, yes. We're not, as you know, not big on, on plans and studies because they end up on a, a shelf. But we do sometimes look at them as now. 
say we fund this study, uh, the next step for you would be to seek funding. This would help you get money from the federal government and state. Yeah, so so essentially a project like this, you know, we can put our best uh, estimate forward if we were trying to seek funds to do the construction, but it, that, you know, and you've seen this with other projects where projects have to come back and ask for additional funding or there's leftover funding. This would be able to uh, give us more of a target of exactly where we, where we want to, what we need for funding. Uh, it'll give us uh, a sense of uh, different agencies that we could reach out to for that type of funding. We're familiar with a lot of them, but there may be something, uh, you know, Olmstead has been brought up many times. If there is a di direct relation with these walls, uh, Olmstead uh, could be a, a resource to be able to reach out to. Um, so I think that's one thing that would uh, that, that this study would help us do. Uh, and I definitely agree with your uh, thought process of uh, studies that just get done and sit on a shelf. Um, you know, again, this is a drinking water supply, so it, this is kind of a two-pronged approach. Uh, it will help with the historical value, but then res restoration of these will also help with protection of our water supply. So it's not going to be a study that just sits on the shelf. Um, you know, there's multiple other places that we will reach out for the funding for construction. Probably be a lot of small little projects, you know, as funding becomes available, but this is kind of the first step for us to be able to move forward to see how that could be broken up. I, I know with the Quicker Shan Rail Trail, uh, this, if we didn't do the study, they wouldn't have been able to get federal money. Correct. So it was a good study for us because we got the money to do the Quicker Shan Rail Trail, which is about to get finished. So yep. sometimes it does end up being good. What, do you, what kind of estimate do you think the project would cost? For restoration of all yeah. the walls? I haven't even put... Uh, Put a, put a number on that. Um. Yeah, and I don't have a number either. But I, you know, one of the one of the aspects of getting the study done, it really is to prioritize. There's, there's five different. There's you know there's several discrete wall sections. Some are in better condition than others, and, and part of that relates to where it is on the pond in rel relative to you know the predominant winds and you know how the waves work. So um, prioritizing, kind of triaging. You know wh how it how it um, how it should uh, unroll, and then you know, as you know, I mean, we we really try to leverage funds. We we yeah. you know we is a lot of these projects are costly, um, but certainly once triage and once um, we've got a, a sense for you know what what a construction project will look like and where it will be, you know there may be elements that our own staff can sort of work on, especially. Some of this is very complex and, and, and specialized, but maybe getting access to these sites, for example, might be something that we can contribute as a, as a kind of a cost share, uh, uh, you know, in kind service. So, um, but without any place to start, we, yeah. we, we would be foolish to just start willy nilly. We want to do it in an orderly fashion. I, I, I know you guys are very active at getting extra grant money, so I mean, yeah, being that this that. is. Uh, there's opera money available. Does that factor in, seeing that this is potable water supply for the city, uh, along with the historic wall, uh, but they're in conjunction with one another? Would opera money apply here? I'm you know, uh, from, from my standpoint, uh, I believe opera money would because it would be protection of the drinking water supply, uh, all SRF fundable projects um, in relation to either drinking water, sewer, or stormwater mm -hmm. are eligible. Uh, so I feel that if a construction project was able to uh, come forward out of this, it would be eligible for our funds. Is, is there any way that you could uh, maybe, I don't know, verify uh, that there would be some mo monies put aside for that so that we know we go out with this study that there's money out there already allocated yeah if uh, if this commission would like uh, you know I don't know what the time frame uh, would be to get approval for uh, some set aside funds through the APA uh, it would have to be a proposal that we would have to make to the APA committee uh, and then they would have to essentially take a uh, take a vote to see uh, whether they wanted to move forward um, but you know we're more than willing to do that I just don't know what the timeline would be with uh, the approval of this or... But would that not be a good idea to do and, and the, get 
some solid money backing it prior to starting any work. You do want to get the commitment. Yep. So if you were to get the commitment now, yep. uh, that would greatly enhance this committee, to, this commission to go out and, and get you the funding for the study. That would be great. But then we'd also have the knowledge that there is a commitment made by the city to fund the project or a good portion of the project. Yeah, definitely. I will put uh, I will put together a proposal and submit it to the upper committee. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I got a couple questions. <coughs> so uh, so to Mr. Messini's, uh, we were saying in regards to the upper fund. So obviously, I, I mean, I know there's a there's a upper committee, um, and I know in a lot of um, cities. Opera funds are being used in the water department because of a lot of cities, the you know, the pumping stations, you know, the water treatment plants, they're all out of date and they need, you know, uh, uh, replacement bad. Um, and, I'm, and I do understand there is a process to, to get commitment <clears throat> to have these funds available. It's, it's something that, you know, to your point, it, 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 there's a time frame. Uh, but I, 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 I do agree with my colleague. Um, I'm not sure with the committee how, how long it would take, you know, to kind of put that on the radar. I know there's restricted and there's unrestricted. I know certain things can be shifted because that happens in the municipal side. Um, you know, but I, I mean, I, I'm definitely for the project, but I would definitely would love to see that a commitment from um, on the city with the opera funds, you know, for this type of project. I know you, you, you don't know what the cost is going to be until we go through the study. So you ha we have to go through the study in order to figure out, okay, is this going to be 200000 or is it going to be one point two? Is it going to be two point? Nobody knows. We Correct. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and with inflation, it doesn't help out. Even, even, it's, it's even worse, yeah. you know. Uh, but I'm, I'm in agreement with Mr. Mr. Mancini um, as far as if, if, yeah. if you gentlemen can put something in, in place and um, – see if they can take a vote on it, that, that, that would be very, very helpful. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, with the OPA funds, uh, they have, the city has been gener generous to the water department. We are doing main replacement and other projects. Um, right. This is one of the projects. Uh, I'll put together a proposal for them and see whether uh, there, there are two parts of funding. There is the Bristol County OPA funds the city has. And, right. And the city's OPA funds. Right. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, definitely put it into both of them and see. Uh, See whether we can get some funding through the opera. Right, because this will tackle the two-phase approach. To, to your yep. point, we we'll we'll, we'll we'll the committee will pay the the study and then yep. the opera. And whether then we'll be it's able to roll right into it, mm -hmm. even if it's not the full construction of all of them, at least we'll be able to get some. Sure. Right. Sure. Do you know off the top of your head how much money you've gotten from opera for the water department? Uh, so the uh, water department, we are slated. I would have to say right now between water and sewer we're probably in the twenty million dollar range. Yeah. yeah, it's very generous. Yeah. Uh, very generous, but as yeah, it costs I, a lot. I when Opa first came <laughs> out, and the city got sixty nine million dollars, and um, I had enough projects lined up to spend that stuff in day one. So, no, right to to, to to your point, I I know. I mean, it's it sounds like a lot of money, but and. It, it's a lot of money to fix. As an example, these pumping stations. I mean, I don't need to appreciate it, but you you know they, they, it, it's not cheap. Right so now. that's I'm sure you can eat up the whole. <laughs> the whole yes. So, all that's right. all I got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. um, so this is the third time I think that you guys have presented this project to the committee. Uh, I was just wondering if, in your own words, you could tell us maybe how necessary you think this study is for the city. And like an urgency. Sense. Well, I'll, I'll just offer my two cents. I'm out there every day, obviously, you know, uh, working on the reservoir, uh, working at the reservation on, on forest lands, um, but. And, as, and you know some of the storms we've had recently, especially the windstorm that drive that drive the the um, uh, the wave action. Um, it's it's almost at this point there's a there's a sort of an incremental, um, not even incremental, exponential. I think is the word I mean to say. Uh, you know, the stones are vis visibly being dislodged from the walls in certain places. And um, I mean, the good news is the stones aren't going anywhere. They, they, they're not falling, you know, they fall, gravity descends them at the, at the base. Um, but it's going to be very tricky 
uh, to put them back. And, and the more that happens, the more that's happening. So um, um, I think I, I, I don't foresee, I think we're getting to a critical point, you know, from just daily observation. Some areas are really at a critical point. Some areas are not impacted. And that's why it's going to be useful to do the study. I think there's, there's almost a mile of, of linear wall scattered over four or five different locations. And some areas are not, are not problems. And, and some areas have some, one of the things the study is going to yield is more architectural information. Every now and then I, I see a new thing I didn't see before. There's some steps cut in some areas from some past use and um, different um, sort of, one thing about the, the, the architectural style that was done, they're not just like square you know, building blocks like Legos. I mean, there's some, there's some nuance to the, archaeology, um, to the, uh, to the archaeological, um, whether it be certain kind of capping or the way that they might have uh, um, you know, ended the walls. And I think it would be really nice to use this opportunity to document all that because I think it's important. It, you know, some of these buildings, some of the buildings that they match are on the historical register, and it would be nice to have the whole thing cataloged, understood, so we can care for it properly. Okay. And my last question uh, would be, barring like ARPA funds, which is a good idea, uh, how would the department fund a study like this uh, without, or if you have to, affecting the rate payers? Like, is there any way for the department to do this study uh, in a way that doesn't affect the rate payers of the city, or is it something that would? No, so all of our funds, uh, our whole entire budget is fully supported by rate payers in both water and sewer. Uh, we do not get uh, any funding from taxation or any other uh, any other means from the city. So uh, we're either grants or, or rates. Okay. Is it the enterprise fund? Yeah. No. Yep. This is under the water enterprise. Yeah. Chris. Um, I just I, I hadn't even thought about until Mr. Lavasia said um, the Olmstead Foundation and the possibility of that because I'm I'm pretty sure that there is at least one section that was designed by the Olmstead firm. There's like one because yeah. I I have a picture of it somewhere. And I'm almost positive that like at least one little section was designed. It was almost like a little park area where the wall is. Yeah, I don't know if I put that picture on the cover of this application. There was something that looks like what you're describing. Mm. And and it looks better in color, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> I gave you a bunch of black and white copies. Um, it it kind of looked like a postcard that might have been from the 1920s. Um, yeah, there was um, one area, and I have a picture of it. It's on my my computer at home, um, and I'm pretty certain that it was an Olmstead design. So if if that's the case, then I would well, think so that you could get some. It's hard to know because um, Brookline is where the where the, where the Olmstead uh, Park is, uh, Olmstead um, uh, historical s site, yeah. and um, you know so there are records that. Um, some photographs that were taken by them, but but I have yet to see sort of a plan or a recognition in their archives that said we did, you know, we we designed this. I mean, you know, North Park, South Park, all of those other places that have been, yeah. you know, that are that are well known in the city. Um, all I know is that they in, in the 1890s, 96 or so, they Charles Elliott and, and Olmsted's son, I think, visited. They they physically came out. There's correspondence between the city and the firm. Maybe five, five or six letters went back and forth. Some dis they, they had some discussion about, um, you know, potentially sort of doing that park treatment out on the reservation. That never happened, and I never saw any, uh, any allusion to any other work they were doing. But I did, but I do see that they took photographs of the wall. So. No, there's, I'll see. I, I'm gonna look through my stuff and see because I thought there was more to it than just that. So I'm gonna Maybe look and I see it. if I can share, find it. I'll yeah, I'll, share it with I'll me if you see it. it you, I, yeah. I've never found it. Yeah. Any yep, I just have a, a couple of questions. So the the firm, are you going to go out for bid just for a selection of a firm? Yeah, and so we would do an RF, RFQ, RFP yep. process to uh, RFQ process in this case for procurement. Yep. And then is your expectation that the company will end up documenting everything, telling you areas that need repair and suggest how to repair it or just tell you what's wrong 
you know, overall, that would be part of their estimate. They would have to, you know, assume a, a necessary repair for for a typical section. So I would imagine that we would get high level, you know, hey, this area needs to be taken apart and totally re put back together. This area can be repointed. This area needs to have X, Y, Z reset and, and redone. You know, not going into a full plan design and uh, specifications of, of, you know, reconstruction, but at least given a uh, overview of, of treatments to the different areas. So would you then uh, go out for further uh, clarification on how to repair certain areas? Yeah, so we would, to be able to go out for a full construction bid package, we would have to, you know, as I said, I don't think we'll be taking and doing all the walls in, in one, you know, large construction bid. We would probably break it up into smaller sections depending on the area or the treatment because um, different firms, construction firms may be uh, able to do some stuff but not other stuff. So then we'd have to come up with smaller bid packages to go out. Okay. So this will give you like a 30,000 foot view of took here's the, the whole out. area, <laughs> here's documentation, here's what's wrong, here's what's... Yeah. But then you'll go out for more engineering? Yep. So I think to sum it up, Mr. Farmer, so basically this will be a feasibility study. In a feasibility study, it'll give you a blueprint as to exactly um, what's going on and what needs to happen. And then the city, at that same point in time, can break it out in phases depending upon how much the construction is, depending upon the type of construction, yep. then there'll be different bid packages because they'll be in a face approach, right? Yeah, that, okay. that's my overall plan. Okay. I just think, um, if, if you would, there, there were two phrases in here that, that um, kind of address that. One is that um, you know, they're going to prepare a scope of work um, for, for uh, further investigation and recommended repairs. But the second one, which, is, which, which kind of struck me, prepare a preliminary order of magnitude opinion of probable construction costs for the scope of the work. So that, uh, while that doesn't, that doesn't nail cost, um, I, I, you know, the engineering approach of uh, order of magnitude, I think that's, that's what I'm, I'm personally interested in, um, sorting out. Yeah. There are some things that, like I was, uh, I was mentioning, um, in terms of prioritizing, there's, there's prioritizing, like what things are urgently needed before like more loss happens, um, and and being able to do that with comprehensively, you know, I, the, the areas I can see aren't all the areas that there are. I have there are areas I ha I can't see, so you know I'm I'm kind of assuming they'll what they what they don't do by you know on the ground maybe they do with drone or maybe they do from a watercraft, but there's a there's a um, there's a level of thoroughness that we can't do. And we don't have the expertise or, the, or, the, or necessarily the means. Yeah. I have another question, too. Um, so with the feasibility study, um, they're not, are they going to oversee the projects? The, the, uh, so let's say if the city does, let's say, a four-phase approach, um, are they going to oversee kind of all the construction projects? Or will the city, at that same point in time, probably hire um, after the study, some en you know engineers to kind of do up all the plans after the study, and the drawings and specifications, and then they that's a point in time. Then you guys can then go on the construction part of it because I know usually my understanding is, is there's a feasibility study, and then kind of once everything is laid out, then it's like okay, this is what needs to happen. Um, I mean, I don't think at that set point in time there will be any drawings because it, it's it's a study. Correct. Uh, yeah, there won't be any, you know, specifications for particular. Yeah, we will need to further, you know, again, come up with those smaller contracts. Yeah. Say, all right, we we know that we want to do this area first. It's the it's the worst area. Uh, we want to put right. together a contract of, uh, you know, x amount of dollars because that's the funding that we're looking at being able to get, or however it works. Uh, and then we'll go out for specific plans and specifications in relation to that contract. So right. the RFQ process uh, will probably have the availability to use the 
whoever does the uh, you know the, the original plan right. or potentially we could go out for RFQ for a new uh, firm uh, but they they would come in they would do full plans and specifications for that one particular project uh, they would, would typically on our projects they assist us through the bidding process to uh, procure a contractor right. and then we have another uh, either their firm or somebody uh, overseeing uh, the right. construction during the project. Okay. Carolina, do you have any questions? Uh, I, I do not. Okay. If no further questions, we'll move on to the next one. No, I'm just, the, the only thing that occurred to me as you were speaking is that the, the critical nature of the wall at this point, as Mike so eloquently described, so if we have a difficult winter, say two or three really ice-bound winters, that criticalness could become a major concern. It could then dislodge all these loose stones you're talking about. So it, it, I guess looking at this assessment, you're probably going to have to act rather quickly, and, and that's something that always troubles me, sitting with doing these projects in small bits and pieces is maybe a detriment to the overall project. It could greatly enhance the cost. Uh, you know, and, and with the study, I guess I'm leading back because our, our purpose tonight is with the study. But but we we grant funding for the study. You do the study. The study is 2023. Uh, if the wall's not repaired or certain sections are not repaired for three, four, five years, that study is obsolete, you know. So it, it, it almost, if it's at the stage that Mike just described, it, it, it needs to be resolved quickly. Yeah, I wouldn't say that a study would be obsolete. Again, you know, it's tough. We need to figure out our order of magnitude at this point. Are we talking $200,000? Are we talking $2 million? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that, um, you know, this type of uh, wall construction isn't my forte. You know, I can be pretty good with pump stations or, or water mains, given the estimates on, on that type of work. This is a little bit outside of uh, my wheelhouse, a little bit outside of Mike's wheelhouse to be able to uh, come up with those types of, uh, those types of um, estimates. You know, again, and that's the one thing that this study will help us do is hit those areas that are at the tipping point where, you know, we know that we have to address this area first and this area first. It might be on opposite ends of the pond, but those are the two worst areas that we need to get, you know, whatever funding, grant funding we get, we need to get into those first. You know, that's one of the reasons that we really, really want to do this, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Further questions? No, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Thank you. Can I just say one thing? So I know we keep, we keep calling this a study, and I suppose technically it's a study. But, assessment and right, I think yeah. we need to like realize that sometimes you have a study where somebody wants to find out, you know, what the feasibility is of, you know, how many people this might affect or this, and then you have an existing conditions report or study, which is you're actually studying the existing conditions for a purpose to, to act on. Like there's there's different kinds of studies, and I think that we really should focus on the fact that even though it's technically it's a study it's an existing conditions report. So you're actually analyzing what you already have and you're documenting what's already there so that you can act on that. So, right. so it's, it's a study, but it's, it's a lot more than just yeah. a, a regular study. Yeah, it's just the terminology in municipal yeah. world that they but use I, this, this feasibility study. Yeah. But it, to your point, it, it, it does, you know, it, it can outline all kinds of different things, but it will be recorded. That's the reason for the study. Yeah. Um, my take on it, I think these gentlemen are raising the red flag now to saying we t we need to do the study to figure out kind of where we at. I mean, are we in DEFCON 5 or 1? Right. You know, and then, it, you know, the second component to it is how much does it cost? You know, so. Like I say, it has been before us quite a few years, but this year we don't have a lot of applications. So... It does look like it's something that might be needed, so we'll take a look at it, and this might be a year where, I mean, it, it does need to be, something Trickle needs to be done, <laughs> so. Yeah, no, it, you know, and you mentioned, Timing. yeah, we have put it in for a number of years, because 
we feel that it uh, again we feel that it's something that needs to be done as well so we can move forward all right we'll move on to the next one is the Onondaga farm bio reserve discovery center uh, acquisition uh, projects 415,658 from Blossom Road. So you you have already got uh, some funds for this one because you're looking for 141 from us? Correct, $141,329. So you already got 267, so that's, that's good. Right, so we qualified for a, a state land grant. Um, and, and, well, I... I know we've presented the project before. Maybe we should just start from the beginning. Um, so um, this is a when the when the bioreserve was created 20 years ago, it was envisioned there would be a environmental education discovery center, and the purpose of that is because after 100 years of um, prohibiting use in the Watepa Reservation, we had a community several generations never really exposed to the Watepa Reservation, exposed to the uh, to the forest land and, and all those values out there. Uh, the Watepa Reservation is now open to the public, has been for 20 years, and um, what we need is a way, uh, is, a, is, is, a, is a place where people can come, land, uh, understand, um, uh, you, you get information on what what is the resource, how can the resource be used. There's a lot of recreational opportunities. The resource is also part of our green infrastructure, which pr which pr protects our water supply and purifies it. Um, there's a lot of uh, very interesting history out there. There's this tremendous wildlife habitat out there. Uh, so this will be a center that, uh, whether school children, adults, um, uh, can go and, and can sort of get oriented and learn a lot more about it. Hopefully will be better equipped to enjoy it and will be will have a mind to help protect it so um, we've identified a property and um, we, 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 we brought the big map and I also have um, some video of the property from shot from a drone by diamond so I'd be happy to uh, at the right time just give you a little glimpse of it and, you know it doesn't it doesn't substitute for a field visit but it's a, it's an interesting view of it yeah so this is a uh, overview map of the property. Uh, this is Blossom Road, down over here, Fall River Westport Line, right down in this area. Uh, so this whole entire property here, uh, the front has a house and an, and an existing barn. Uh, what we're asking for the uh, CPC funding for is uh, to be able to use as a match uh, for the uh, seven acres on the, on the rear of the property. Uh, there's a total of 9.2 acres or so thereabouts of the whole entire property. Uh, we'd be asking for CPC to match to uh, purchase this back half. We do have multiple funding sources. Our original ask when we put together the uh, when we put together the proposal to CPC uh, was more than uh, what we're currently asking for. Uh, we have have we do have a number of different funding sources that is involved with this project. Um, so we have uh, the land grant, which is uh, part of that uh, seven acres in the back. Uh, we'll be purchasing that. We have uh, ARPA funds that will be going towards the purchase through the Bristol County. <clears throat> and we also have a uh, state earmark in the amount of uh, $150,000 uh, that came through from the economic development bill uh, earmark um, through the state uh, and our state legislators were great with uh, assisting us in, in getting that earmark. Um, for the actual uh, construction, we also have uh, ARPA funds um, that we're planning on using for uh, renovation and repurposing of the, uh, of the structures that are on the site. Great. So so I was the, can we see the video? Yeah, so, yes, I've, sir. so I've got three different clips. Um, this first one, and again, I'll, I'll thank um, 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 Paul Bodine and, um, and, and the student whose name is escaping me, but from Diamond. They shot, they shot a video two years ago. We, this project, of course, was, was, was not ready for prime time, but we presented it a couple of years ago. They shot a great video. Who knows what happened to that video? I didn't so mean to interrupt. My apologies. Can the public see that, too? Or? Oh, I, I think... I'm not sure. So that would be. Uh, we don't have a camera going. Oh, okay. Well, 
I think he's picking it up right it through the laptop. Right it, oh, it's, it's being recorded. Thank you. Great. So, um, so the first shot you saw was uh, the drone at street level, um, uh, the farmhouse at you know the the, uh, the the curb view of the farmhouse and the barn, and then it kind of went down to uh, along the fields. Um, if I can grab another one, the second shot, the second one you will see is a shot of the agricultural land. And this is now, now you're at, um, you're on the farm lane, which kind of uh, goes from the front of the, uh, the front of the property down to the pond. The, this consists of, it's seven acres of agricultural land. And it's actually divided up very neatly into seven fields. It includes a historic cemetery. Oh, and by the way, while you're looking at that, um, this is the, um, uh, I do have a letter of support from the, uh, a new letter of support from the uh, um, Historic Commission. Commission. Historic Commission, I'm getting distracted. This is a different letter on the top. There's also Thank a you. couple of support letters that came in late from our, from our fire reserve partner and from Mass Audubon, um, um, who expressed an interest in, in um, partnering with us to do uh, educational programming. So I apologize, it's not, we don't usually submit these things late, but they kind of came in late. Thank so you, sir. Thank you, Mike. Now, on the agricultural end, are you going to keep it that way? Like, say, Bristol Aggie, are they going to come and use it? Yeah, so we, we kind of talked to a couple of different partners already um, to see, uh, and we, we've gotten some interest uh, as we move further on the project. We'll see how it pans out, but some of them that we've talked to is Diamond uh, with a uh, farm to table type program, uh, being able to use the site. BCC, uh, the sustainability mm -hmm. program. Uh, Bristol Aggie is another one that uh, that we'll be reaching out to to see whether they be interested in partnering with us. So the the, the grant, it's a land grant, and la although we're buying land, land actually stands for land acquisition and natural diversity. So the the main thing is this is it's conservation land. Whether it remains farm, whether we uh, you know, uh, uh, you know whether it's a productive farm, whether it's a hay field, whether it's truck crops, whether it's um, or, or whether it just becomes habitat land. Um, the idea is it's conservation land. It's protecting the water supply. Um, it happens to be really good prime farmland. Um, the, the, we the state um, the state has uh, does these soil overlays, and you know that's. That didn't hurt our application at all. They really like that. We got seventy, per and so what we've done is we've um, we've we've um, we've isolated the farmland portion for this grant so that we could specifically maximize our you know leveraging power from the state, and that's why we get so much from the state because they they saw the value of that um, of the um, of the land as conservation land. Um, the last the last. Um, What's going to happen with the cemetery? So we had a, a private firm, public, um, Pal public PAL, public, public archaeological lab, um, just did a study. They did a form E and they uh, submitted it to Mass Historical. Um, what's going to? Um, the idea is to just preserve it in its in its state. We're not going to do anything with it other than perhaps maintain it. I think that's that would be ideal. They've identified 16 different burials there, which was a surprise. There's, there's three with really nice readable headstones, and there's 13 that have head and foot stones, but they're primitive stone. They don't really have any. Um, is it like in further in the land, or is if it because I know on Blossom bit, Road there's one the on the left before you get to Adirondack Farms. There's like yeah, it's, it's not so it's not that one. Right? Can you see those? Can you see the stones? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh wow. So they're really almost water view <laughs> very yes. oh, wow. mm -hmm. and, and they're surrounded by a stone wall yeah. and the owners and uh, you know the owners the previous owners lived there for 40 years and they really took care of it and part of w what is nice about this project and, and we looked at 15 different sites um, but part of what's nice about this project is these owners had an impulse to do education and they, they had a petting farm there which is a really odd I, thing I went to it I, I took my uh, nieces and nephew there when they were little it was a great place. Mm. 
Yeah, and, and so in, in a way, um, and I'm not gonna go to the last video because it's similar to this. The last video just shows more of the pond, but, but this, just the unusual and fortunate uh, happenstance that we could identify a property. You know, part of land conservation is just having the opportunity. Um, you know, if we would have gone 30 years ago, they, they you know, they, they raised a family here. This wouldn't have been available, but it is available. It's the only privately owned parcel around the shoreline that actually has a view of the water. And um, w what's really interesting is that uh, the, I just discovered this this week, based on these drone shots, this property actually aligns with the waterworks building and with the stand tower. You, I don't quite have it here in this shot. Um, and you know, most people won't be seeing it from a drone, they'll be on the ground, but it's just interesting that uh, you can see the other side, you can see, um, uh, uh, anyway, I don't have control over what I'm doing here. But. Yeah. So, um, so I don't know. Do you have? Uh, yeah. So just so the land doesn't go all the way. It's depicted by the red line uh, on that. The uh, land that abuts the pond directly is owned by the uh, power company. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that we're working with them uh, potentially to be able to uh, to uh, gain you know gain that land added to this piece. Um, some of the other partners that we've worked with on this project that, you know, naturally part of the bioreserve, some of our partners out there, trustees of the reservation, um, they're, they're always big supporters. Uh, Mike's taken them for a couple of walks out on this property already uh, to uh, acquaint them with the property. Um, the BCC Sustainability Program, uh, Mass Autobahn, uh, Narragansett Bay Estuary Program, uh, I don't know if the committee is aware, though. Uh, Appalachian Mountain Club has now partnered with the Bio Reserve, and they're doing uh, guided walking tours out there. Um, so there's a lot of uh, good things that are coming up uh, within the Bio, you know, Bio Reserve, and kind of need like a, like a home base, some way for people to be able to go to get information. Um, you know, this center that. Uh, uh, we're looking at doing is also going to be a great place uh, for educational. You know, currently there is a uh, group that comes out to Mike's um, office once a year uh, that takes school children out there and they and they do a tour. Uh, this will be a place where they'll be able to have uh, you know educational rooms and different exhibits uh, in the building and stuff like that. So, you know, I think uh, down the road, I think this is really going to be a uh, really nice spot. You know, you go to a lot of these other um, areas, whether it be, you know, I just, uh, you know, came through New Hampshire this weekend, and uh, you go by, you know, uh, all the different uh, national forest places that are up there that have the visitor centers with the educational areas and stuff like that. You know, the bioreserve being over 13,000 acres, which CPC has helped uh, add uh, land to that uh, protected forest land. You know, this is really something that uh, a lot of people don't know that we have in our backyard, um, you know, uh, but we really need to promote it more, I think. You know, uh, so I think this will help us do that. Yeah, I think it would be a good center to have all the information there, trails, everything. Yeah. Yep. Once, you know, because there's so that, we've uh, partnered up on how many acres have we done so far? I don't know in acres. We've we've probably just about a hundred, in, in five or six different projects. Yeah. Um, and this is actually this is quite a good value because um, again we're bringing seventy percent from the state. Uh, so and I mean we're frugal like you guys are. We're trying to we're trying to find money outside the community to leverage these funds because we you know we we really value these funds. This has really enabled us to do land conservation that we would never have been ab ab able to do without CP with the CPA. So um, if there's state grants that complement um, or even, you know, other, other funds, that's, you know, we will always do that. But this is where you're asking $141,000 for, um, for a property, for a project that's over 400000 So I, I think no. this is, this we, is we, a, we appreciate this that. This is a good value. value. It is. And, um, <laughs> We will be, as we have with other uh, CPA projects, we will have a conservation restriction that will be recorded, held by a third party, 
uh, conservation group that will have all the conservation values spelled out, what, why we're protecting it, mm -hmm. and then they will have the enforcement um, duty every year. In fact, I just got a, a letter from the uh, Buses Bay Coalition that holds a couple of our restrictions that they go out there every year, they do, they do an on-site inspection, they, they fill out a form, they file it, and so um, if anything was to be amiss, um, you know, they would first of all notify us, but they there's, they also have legal authority to uh, to take action. Mm. And I can't imagine what that would be because I yeah. mean our mission is pretty much aligned with the conservation of these properties, um, but that isn't always the case with other owners. But it's a, it's it's the best a conservation restriction is is, is sort of the best conservation um, assurance in the land. There's no better. Way to assure that a property, you know, where your money goes here will be in perpetuity. Does the board have a? What do you ask well, question? Did what's the, the percentage of citizenry from Fall River that utilize the bioreserve? Do you have a handle on that? Is it half? Um, is it twenty percent? Oh no! I mean, it's 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 far less because it's we we're struggling. I was talking to Kristen about that before. You know, we're struggling for. Um, people's attention uh, and this is going to sound very strange but COVID actually helped drive people out in the, in, in the bioreserve uh, especially in the beginning because uh, you know social social distancing and you know isolating from others wide open space was what people were craving and ironically some of those parking lots were over full and so some of the worst crowding was in the parking lot but once but you know, we're almost to 16,000 acres. This you could you could start in Fall River and walk all the way to Lakeville at this point on protected land. You have to cross a few streets, but um, you're not going to see many houses. And um, you 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 can put. So we did a we did a hike over the weekend. We had 25 people on one particular hike, but um, and we're encountering people here and there: mountain bikers, runners, uh, dog walkers. But that's a lot of land. You can you can lose a lot of people. You know, if it is twenty percent, those twenty percent can go out there, and um, they they spread out. People spread out, and we just finished the twenty mile loop, which uh, with the partners of Appalachian Mountain Club, and um, you know, twenty miles out in the woods is remote. This is a big area, so um, what we need is more more volunteers like AMC. And um, we need a nice, um, and that's why I think this idea is going to really do the trick. Um, we need a place, a sort of a hospitality aspect, a kind of an education aspect, so that you know we ourselves in this city are assured that we always have a front seat on this bus. Um, when we do when we do these walks, we get people from Cape, from Providence, from Boston. Um, we have we have a world class resource, and we just have to make sure it's. It's it's you know it, we're exposing school kids in the school systems, um, you know Mass Audubon has been good in the last couple of years actually, um, working with uh, uh, different school uh, entities and and uh, but there's so much more that can be done, and um, that's why this is this idea is going to really mm -hmm. be a yeah, success. It's, it's, just, no, I think it's a great project. I, mm -hmm. Just on that, though, too, I think since COVID, we've probably, I think it's probably driven more Fall River residents, made them aware of the of the space out there. Right. Personally, I, I think there's been more Fall River people out there since COVID, trying to get out of the city, get a, get away from, yeah. you know, the city and get out yeah. there. It's how do you get kids off of Game Boy and into the woods? You know? Yeah. I grew up in Pennsylvania in the woods, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, we were always in them, walking, hiking, you know, right. even in uh, uh, AMC. Yep. Uh, what they can help us do, I mean, they they fix trails, bridges. I mean, you know, they they keep the trail going. You know, yeah. and that's, yeah. that's a nice plus. There's something I would add about AMC too that um, it isn't always realized. They have edu they have trained uh, group leaders. So I, I went on the one this weekend, and um, you know they have certain trail sort of protocols like you know no one's left behind they they'll do a hike with a sweep person so that we don't lose a person uh, and they're teaching trailmanship and and um, different things that can translate to let's say we get locals coming out there but then they want to go up to the white mountains well we've 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 marked our trail 
and the AMC guides are actually, um, you know, whether it's Leave No Trace or some of the other programs that they're affiliated with, mm. um, our, our, our residents will be exposed to these, um, you know, good trail, um, say behaviors, but etiquette. Etiquette, yeah. thank you. Trail etiquette, <laughs> and and they'll be prepared to go, uh, you know, in, in other parts of the country that has that have trails. Yeah. Yeah, I think that will help out with tourism too. Yeah, another yeah. milestone for the city. It really I think will. It, I think it's great. Yeah, that was put it. us on the map. Yeah. yeah, after we did the twenty mile loop trail out there, I was uh, I was in the office one day and somebody called from Providence, a group of ladies that wanted to go, yeah. wondering where they could get the trail map and wanted to go hike the trail. I was just, I was impressed. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Does the board have any other questions? Alex, it's no. not a question. I was just going to say that uh, this is a great application. I think it's a very potentially transformative project for the city um, and I personally really appreciate you and all the work you do leveraging additional funds I think this is a perfect example we can use in the future of how to approach leveraging funds for uh, these types of grant applications and I just want to mention that even if the farms aren't used as active agriculture um, correct me if I'm wrong I believe like meadow and grassland is still one of the few ecosystems not really with any protection so there is value in just kind of letting the field yeah. sit as is as grassland yep. there's a lot yeah. of animals and such that utilize it like who sees fireflies anymore yeah but seriously this you know um, pollinators pollinator gardens are, are really uh, a big thing these days um, they actually kept bees and there's still beehives there so yeah there's I, I think we're gonna we're gonna be seeking at some point community input for different different ideas because um, you know we never claim to know them all and we're always surprised at what's out there so yeah especially close proximity of meadows to water you know you've got you've sort of trying and woods you know you're tri triangulating different habitats and, and a lot of and a lot of species you know cross habitats and so it's it's going to be an exciting project sounds good now I do appreciate you answering all the other questions because you know people looking at it you know watching it on TV you know they don't know what's going on you know they're like oh, there's a study for you two thousand dollars going to sit on a shelf you know when they hear how it's going to be put together why it needs to be done you know it, it makes our job easier too when if yeah. we do approve the project how uh, you know you no answer. yeah without a doubt the other thing that's nice is it gets it gives people an opportunity to see that Fall River is not just buildings in a city that there's so much more to Fall River than city yeah. and uh, this is this is just a great way to, to, to do that That's true yep. one of the great facts that Mike taught me Fall River is over 50 percent of protected forest land or water by area but people wow. don't even realize that yeah. no. Don't. no one knows that no. When you tell them the center of Fall River is in the North Wartupper Pond, they say, no, it isn't. It's on Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we get some, we get some educating to do. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, all. Thank you so much Have a great for the presentation, you. guys. No Thank problem. you. All righty. Uh, well, that for the funding hearing round is done. Uh, do we... I, the only new business uh, I have, we did send out uh, a letter to everybody that uh, needed extensions. I think we had, um, I think we had, uh, how many was it? Oh, she's talking. I think we had like seven or eight on the list. So we sent them out uh, a letter to uh, send in that they want an extension. Some projects are now just getting people to do like brick work, and they've been waiting for years. So I said, just put an extension in. You know, I understand. You know, but you got to put that in for we know what's going on. So, right. can we just get that list so we uh, uh, know which ones? Yeah, I, mean, I, I got it here is. somewhere. Right here, actually. It's going to 
be on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, we have, uh, <clears throat> we're sending out uh, the Kennedy Overlook, uh, which will be finished this, this spring, uh, but we still need him to send us a letter. The Vietnam Shelf with Tupa, I don't know if they started on that. Any, anything's been done there. That was only three thousand dollars we gave. The what? Uh, there was Vietnam South Patapa. I think it was for buying a parcel of land. I have to look and see what that. Uh, that was the water department actually. Uh, preservation design guidelines. That was two twenty one. So two 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 two. I mean FY twenty. Uh, 77 Freedom Street, historic pumping station. These are all FY20s. I think the design, the design yeah. guidelines are almost done. No, yeah. they are done. They are done. The They're check's fully, been received, and, okay. and the guidelines have been shipped to us, so yeah. it should be a closed. Process. Yeah, some of us just signing off, too. So, it's just uh, glass invoice. Lafayette Durfee House, FY21, so, but it's going to be two years. So, mm -hmm. Maritime Museum and uh, 77 Freedom Street have that thank you uh, does anybody have any new business they want to put in yeah I do okay all right um, let's see. so um, one of the things for new business so some of the topics I want to talk to the board about we can just just put them out there and then kind of uh, for the board to kind of put some thought into it and maybe when we meet again just have a, a full discussion um, one of the things is um, you know if, if the board can kind of set a meeting when we set the meeting let's say I'm going to use March if we can set the meeting let's say the, the board will meet will ho will hold the meetings every second week of the month the reason why I'm saying that is so it'll give so everybody that's coming before the, uh, the board to submit projects, extensions, or any type of information. They know exactly when the deadline is. So all the required documentation is handed to us ahead of time, you know, versus kind of like the same day or the night before. Because um, just, you know, for myself as well, I'm sure everyone else, we all work, work full time. So yeah. it takes a little bit longer to kind of review some of these documents. So we, I'd we do have the deadline, which is January 16th this year. So they can't give us anything after that. I mean, we get the full package then. I mean, they, if they want to add something that they miss, sometimes we'll take it in. No, right. No, no. I, I mean, right, for the projects, what I'm saying, that's what kind of we're going through. Let's say, like, once the projects are approved. Um, if the board is going to meet, as an example, we got a couple of things handed. Not, and I'm not saying that's the normal. I'm just saying it's just, I think if we set a, a, a certain time when we meet every month, it's just, it's across the board for everyone. It's something to think about. It's not well, nothing that make a decision. We, it's just something to think about. We do that, but during the funding rounds, we kind of uh, speed it up a little. This way you kind of retain, because if we were to meet on these five projects and then wait till March to meet on the other five projects, kind of lose a little of what we talked about tonight so when it comes all to right. the voting it, 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 you're all you're it's fresh in your mind oh right yeah so I mean I know so kind of the process we're going through right now I mean I know we have to meet regularly but I'm just saying I guess just on the regular day-to-day -day business you know as far as like once we're going through you know reviewing these projects deliberation and once it gets approved I say then going forward um, you know because obviously to your point chair Mr. Chairman that Yes, it's fresh in our minds to kind of meet back to back. I'm saying right. after this process, so that way, you know, going forward when we do meet, you know, we all kind of know and we can all plan in our schedule saying, okay, this is when we meet. So if I'm making plans, I'm like, all right, there's the second week of the month or this Monday or Tuesday. No, I, I think I think it's more helpful. Through the process right now, we're going through, absolutely not. Obviously, we have to meet more regularly because this is I'm going to say our busy season yeah if that makes any sense but I'm just saying going forward down the road this was I think it's just helpful across the board not just for board members to kind of plan out their weeks vacation time or going away no, no, or something like that to, to everyone else yeah. so it's just a recommendation for folks to kind of think about and yeah. get that it doesn't have to be the same I'm just throwing a suggestion out there as a um, you know uh, something that, that that would be helpful. I, I, I know the conservation. We meet the first Monday of every month. 
right? right and right most on. of the boards are set that way, and I think ours might be one of the only ones that's not. And then it usually is kind of like a okay, can anybody meet on these particular dates? We're gonna, you know, we need to have a meeting. Let's let's pick a date, and then it goes back and forth. And what he's, it would make more sense what you're saying yeah, right. to like we have a set date, and if for some reason we need to change it then okay we can change it but at least have like it gives us more consistency instead of right. oh well we need to have a meeting now let's decide what day is better or this with that and All right. no, yeah right. I, I think that's a good well, thing we could, to put uh, on another agenda definitely yeah that's what i'm saying to put it on the yeah. next agenda i'm just kind of just as a new business just putting it to, to discuss further um yeah. just to, to allow um all all you know all the board members to kind of think about what their thoughts are and see something no, if no, it's no. if it's cumbersome or if it's not then if it doesn't work it doesn't work <laughs> no. it'll be up to the board <laughs> yeah. you know um the the other thing too um that i saw I, I saw one of the new videos actually by the water department which is very very well uh, put together video and i've seen other videos as well for um, um that other you know departments i put um together i was wondering and again i'm, I'm still kind of new to the board um, can the actual board members kind of be part of that video and you know kind of help promote the CPC as well um, you mean that I think you're talking about the videos we actually are a part of it's a subcommittee that Caroline and I are on uh, oh okay. the yeah, I, that's what I'm saying I'm, I don't, yeah, I don't the, know what they I yeah, don't because that's uh, finished project so uh, yeah I mean like say uh, you get on the the what's up us yeah, yeah. well that's the, Say North Park, the lights. And that just started last year. And you year would too. be, that would be your project? You would be with Fred TV, they would take you out there and you'd talk about it with the people from the park. Oh, so right, but it. with the one with, right, but I'm saying the one, let's say, with the, the one the water department did, it was just kind of more of um, putting out to the community kind of what this, the CPC and kind of what we're all about. It's just kind of, it was a, an informative video. Hmm. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying can, can the board board members kind of be a part of that? Just I mean, I, I think it will showcase not just you know what we do for you know private and public, but also yeah. we also have an opportunity to kind of showcase yeah. kind of what, what we do here as well. Because I think we have uh, what five videos out. Now. I was in one. Yeah. Because I was on I. We have five videos. Yeah, it's just out. a recommendation again. Yeah. If we yeah. can discuss later. No, just, we, yeah. we do for TVs. Yeah. Make, makes them. Uh, Sandy coordinates, does right. all the coordinating with them. Then, uh, she yeah. finds the yeah. hosts to want, do the interviews. We want the CPC member in those videos. <laughs> yeah, so, it's just a, a new yeah. business, just throwing it out no, there. No, that's that's a, yeah. so it, normally, the person who does that project would be in that video. Right, right. No, I, I, right, I understand that. I'm just saying the one that I'm talking about is the, the informative videos of promoting the CPC, if we can also be a part of that as well. Those are. Yeah. Those are. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that is what the, the, we're doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying how you can like, help yeah. with them if you want. <laughs> like, like. No, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> again, that's why I said I'm new. I'm trying to, you know, although, you know, it, it seems it's been a year, but, you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of information, yeah. you know, and I think as we go through, it's just a learning that, curve. That's why we started those uh, videos, what, two years ago? Yeah, it was the impetus to get it. was to, uh, mm -hmm promote CPC for the publics to show them what we're doing right. and uh, because you know you have those guys people out there that say oh we're it's, it's a waste of taxpayers money so right. when we do sit here and we spend the money I mean you know it's like is that the best way to spend it and I can say most of our votes have been on the city side have been good but the videos now will show you like uh, the uh, Vietnam Memorial Wall there's only two walls that are 80%, one in Oklahoma, one here in Fall River, and then the main wall in D.C. So, I mean, that's a highlight that we were able to be a part of, and it shows how CPC came in, our yeah. part in it, then the other funding they got. So, you know, uh, same with the Oak Grove, how we, Oak Grove, Oak Grove was like really bad shape yeah. when we came in, mm -hmm. and they restored the brick, the everything, and it shows the public, you know, what, the yeah. money's being used on, so yeah. Mafia Durfee. Mafia Durfee, yeah. Nice. Right, yeah. Um, and the last thing, um, I was in, I'm not sure who updates the city website. I'm sure it's the city that we have to submit the information, like the agendas and the meeting minutes. Yeah. You know, um, so they can be up to date. Some of the stuff goes back to our last posting was like in 2019. 
2020. Um, I think we're updated before 2019, aren't we, Sandy? Yeah. Um, so I looked at the agendas and the meeting minutes. Um, it's where it says uh, yeah, videos on, on demand. Yeah, that one is not updated. Yeah, oh, okay. Because there's so many, but that's the, probably the one section that I need to get them. Um, but I try to keep like the members updated, but our turnover is so high. <laughs> I'm always sending them updates on our committee members. Oh. But that, that I send on a regular basis. And, and I do ask the No, right, yeah, because they're the ones that have control of it. There's two people up there, so it's like trying to... Mm. And actually, our website probably looks better than most websites on the city site, so... Yeah. No, so. But, hey, I'm just, again, I'm just no, throwing no, no, it no, out I, there. I, I, it's, it's, it's always been a double check to make sure, because, you know, we're not always looking in that one area, so, no. Yeah, and, that, and that's all I have. That's all I got okay. for tonight. Already, uh... Anyone else? Project update, or are we going to do that a different day? We'll, we can do that another day. Um, are we going to have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. We're, uh, we'll start roll call. Caroline? Yes. Joan Bentley, yes. Kristen Cantero Oliveri, yes. Alex Silva, yes. John Bright, yes. Richard Calderon, yes. Rick Mancini, yes. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.